Hey everyone, Jason here with another episode of Every Corner. Today I will be reviewing the Chasing Twitchers EP by folk rock band Delta Ray, which released on November 15th of 2013. Okay, so Delta Ray is a Durham, North Carolina born folk rock band consisting of siblings Ian, Aaron, Eric, and Brittany Holges, as well as Elizabeth Hopkins, Mike McKee, and Grant Emerson. The band name Delta Ray came from the fictional story that the Holges' mother intended to write about a southern girl named Delta Ray who summons the Greek gods to Earth, kind of a folk um, story inspired um, inspired band name there, obviously. The folk the folk inspired inspiration translates into the Chasing Twisters EP as, as the name is actually based around a folk story of Pecos Bill, who's a cowboy that lassos, lassos tornadoes. Obviously the folk inspiration has is is really these two points. It is also within the band's music. Um, I'll get to that in a while once we get to the track review. Alright, uh, continuing with the background information, the siblings started the band in 2009 after lead singer, lead singer Brittany graduated from UC Berkeley. They made their professional debut at Duke University, um, which is the alum of Eric and Ian in 2009. In February 2010, the band, the siblings and the band think they needed um, some inspiration. So they so they boarded and bought two or tickets to the um, Kiamu um, live music cruise to, through the Caribbean, it's a it's a floating musical fest. This has been this has been called. Um, it features dozens of established and up and coming musicians and singer songwriters. Although the band wasn't officially on the bill, they they went on the boat and performed and won the cruise open mic contest, where they gained a lot of notoriety and you know actually got a lot of shout outs from um, other bands and other fans and whatnot. They were on the uh, on the boat, so a good way to expose themselves, a good way to, you know, tell the world about themselves here. The band, in their short history, has also received many shout-outs from President Obama, Pharrell, and Alanis Morissette as well. Uh, a little bit about the band's professional success so since 2010. The band used um, the, the crowdfunding started Kickstarter to fund the, ba fund the making of Carry the Fire, the band's debut album, which released on June 19th of 2012 before being signed to Sire Records. The band also played 2013 South by Southwest Festival in Austin, Texas with fellow folk rock bands Wild, Wild Feathers as well as Bonnaroo Festival in Tennessee over the summer. They are currently working on their sophomore album which is due out later this year. The band were, were also featured um, in special guests of the PS22 Chorus of Staten Island, New York. And if you're unfamiliar with the chorus, um, basically in this particular chorus, the, the music teachers film the students performing. And they've, they've, had, they've had a lot of notoriety. They have a YouTube channel, they have a Facebook page, they have a Twitter page, and um, the band was on there. So they so the kids covered a couple of, of the um, songs, including At the Bottom of the River, If I Love You, Dancing in Graveyards, Fire, and a cover of Oasis's Wonder Wall. Very good cover that was. Um, the links to these videos, I will put them in the description below. Definitely check that out if you have time, if you're interested. And uh, finally, the band is also inspired by a wide wide variety of art, artists, including Fleetwood Mac, James Taylor, and Kanye West. Very, very eclectic um, styles there. All right, then my track-by-track track review. I first heard of Delta Ray um, on iTunes after just wanting to go look up some new music. So I pull up iTunes. It seemed very interesting. After hearing them for the first time, I knew I was going to like them because of the vibe they gave off. They could be characterized really as a as a vocal heavy pop and folk rock band that attempts to include a lot of genre fusion and and artist inspiration in, into the material, while still managing to write honest, um, staying staying to the roots, honest, um, simple lyrics. Um, as far as genre fusion, they do add a lot of Flashes of, of blues, traditional country rock, a bit of Motown with some soul, some gospel genres. You might hear actually a lot of the band's influence as well, including Fleetwood Mac. But we'll get to that with Lindsey Buckingham when we get to that track. All right, um, all the above influences, as I said, that kind of go into the band's music um, seems to come together on every single song, especially of this EP, and built around the simple lyrics, the big sing-along choruses, the booming choruses at points. The instrumentation is just all over the place. It goes from being soft to just being a jam session to being acoustic guitars to being drums to being bells to being whistles. Everything is in this record. 
Um, it reminds me a bit of American authors, Mumford and Sons for sure, and definitely Lumineers. I think they definitely do characterize well, very well with the Lumineers. All right, um, my, the first track off this um, EP is Chasing Twisters. There are five tracks. Let's get right into it. Chasing Twisters, this opening title track seems to perfectly embody the, the, the feel, the, the carefree concept, excuse me, in the mood of the, of the EP. The song opens with an interesting, slower-paced, Western-inspired rattling drum, something you would see out of a Western, um, in vocal pairing combination. It reminds me of the, of the guitar instrumental entitled Eastwood off of Brad Paisley's 2011 album, This Is Country Music, as well as just, like I said, a cowboy Western showdown like you would see in an old Western movie. Very, very interesting there. Um, the song then, with the help of some emotionally passionate lyrics from both Liz Hopkins and the band um, seems to build up to the explosive chorus, which is built around around powerful attitude, the attitude-filled, raspy vocal styles of Liz Hopkins. A lot of rolling and wild guitar work. I do like that how it's how it sounds wild, but it's also very contained. Um, the song is then finished off with some soft underlying piano and group background vocals that I think add a nice touch. Definitely check out the title track. It'll be stuck in your head. I guarantee it here. All right, the second track here is Run. This track is by far the most upbeat and uppy track on the EP. It seems to explode with every angle, every energy, and you just have life to this track. Um, this track opens up with a short, airy instru instrumentation pattern that explodes into a free-flowing body of the song, which is led by rolling instrumentation, a lot of dominant drums there. Drums will be, they just start off, they continue, it's, just, it's amazing. And, um, and a lot of guitar work that I was impressed by as well. All this is topped off by some very catchy, um, very gentle, very yet very powerful just lead vocals, especially just there. The backing vocals are there as well. They add a very, a very amazing amount of life and just energy to the track, as I was saying. Um, on this track, run the instrumentation instrumentation style of the song seems to match up well to the lyrical meaning. Um, there's a video on Delta Ray Music on their YouTube channel. You can go ahead and watch this. As I said before, um, the, the the musical style is very, the instrumental style rather, is very free flowing. Um, it is driven by its instrumental hook, strong melody. Um, lyrically, the song is written um, as a story, as you know, like like a lot of other songs we see in history. Obviously, it deals deals with wishing that you could erase your past and become a different person. And if you if you if you were to watch the background video of this song. And the track review of this song on Adult Red Music, you see that that Britney, the lead singer of the song, was actually having personal troubles. So she can definitely relate to relate to this um, very nicely, and I think it is definitely um, her emotion is definitely caught up, and I think it's a very, very, very good song here. All right, that's track number two. Um, before I get into the, into the rest of the EP here, track number three and four, especially, I do want to say. Um, these, these next two tracks entitled "If I Loved You" and "Dance in the Graveyards" are special, are actually updated versions. Um, if you were to go find their 2012 album "Carry the Fire," you will see that they are on there. And it's, in my opinion, in listening to this, I think it's, I think the band took a risk, but it paid off for them. Um, I mean, you know, they they kind of enhanced these versions that are on this EP. Maybe they weren't happy with it for some reason. Um, they are enhanced in a way that that are that are nice, uh, not forced, as we've seen with a couple um, artists in the past here. And as I was going through this review, actually, I was thinking of some artists to compare, you know, the negative side to. And unfortunately, one of my favorite bands popped up um, when I thought about this, and that being Everclear's Everclear with their 2011 um, greatest hits album, Return to Santa Monica. Um, in, in which they re-recorded some of their of their greatest hits with a couple new surprises many years after their after their original greatest hits. I think their original greatest hits came out in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so are the lead singers obviously older? They obviously have an older, and more experienced musical style. He, you know, it it just doesn't sound right for whatever reason. Um, I I like Everclear. I'm not bashing their music. I'm just bashing their style. In this this album, it's it's very interesting. I will I will talk about that more when I start re to review an Everclear album, hopefully in the near future. All right, so that's just my thoughts on uh, on on what the band did as far as you know, kind of remastering and refixing. I do like this version though. All right, the third track here is "If I Loved You." Um, 
It's it's one of the best known tracks featuring Lindsey Buckingham of Fleetwood Mac, one of the band's inspirations. This track is a new rendition of the band's successful If I Loved You off their 2012 album, Carry the Fire, as I said. It features Lindsey Buckingham, one of their idols, as I just said as well. Um, for this new version, it seems that, like the band stripped it down the song to its bare bones, rebuilt it, adding a choir, seems to be a horn section as well, and some group claps are very, very interesting. Well, this change certainly slows down the song, um, certainly slows down the energy, you know, that I was talking about before. As compared to the first couple tracks of the song, I believe that the rebirth, that, that the rebuilt version is done in a way that will keep listeners interested. Um, yeah, very, very interesting here. Um, this newer version of the track is slower paced with, with a piano and a guitar led ballad that features Liz Hopkins on lead vocal singing about the lover that she doesn't have feelings with for anymore that she doesn't want to be with. You know, like, let's say you're with a person for a long time and you suddenly decide, oh, I want to be with them. This is exactly what the song is hitting. Um, it's a very, very powerful song. The vocal performance on this track is both very, um, very, so you know, very honest as well. Honestly, that's, that's what I was going to say here. And um, especially during the chorus, a very sentimental, su 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 that's what I was going to say here. Excuse me. Um, the chorus is, is very, it, it just leaks a pure heartbreaking emotion that I believe will stay with the listener for a while after, after you listen to that song. Very interesting. All right, the fourth track here, Dance in the Graveyard, is one of my favorites on this EP, except my, my favorites on this EP are basically all of them. Once you, once you listen to this EP, you will learn that here. Um, like If I Loved You, this track has been updated and, and enhanced from its original, like I had said. Um, the original version featured a, a drum and guitar pairing that seemed to turn the band turn the turn seemed to turn into a jam session rather um, during the chorus um, when the lead vocals of of Ian the band you know the Ian seemed to flow directly into the into some group background vocals as well as some fun active instrumentation the newer version sees Delta Ray putting a positive spin on the haunting and eerie thought of a graveyard. The, the song starts out with a very um, slow but interesting, simple, um, strong drum beat that travels through the song, mixes nicely with the vocal, with the vocals of the song. Um, um, the song then, then seems to gradually build up towards the main chorus as the drum beat is mixed um, with, with interesting short, um, short piano chords and sharp vocals. The, the chorus of the song is introduced with a mix of clapping, um, very playful piano, um, buzzing guitars that I think are very interesting as well, um, as well as group vocals that bring the song into a dramatic and cheerful close. Basically putting um, the meaning of the song is, is, a, is an anthem that celebrates the afterlife and the loved ones that we've lost, regardless of who you are or how your loved one was lost. It just puts a positive spin on death. I know death is obviously a, uh, a, a tough subject to, to um, touch, but this is done in a cheerful and beautiful manner, I would, I would think, I think. All right, so the fifth track here, and finally, is I Will Never Die. Um, this track it starts out with a very slow, soulful vocal and drum beat pairing that gradually builds into the main chorus with a lot of energy that can be seen with a strong vocal and very a smoky atmosphere at present, kind of as we get through it, you kind of, kind of visualize it. Um, the chorus then seems an over, sees the overall strong vocal performance continue, um, both, both with the group vocals and the solo vocals, with booming lines that can fit very well with the strong um, drum backbeat. Very interesting there, you know, just very passionate these, these lyrics are. All the elements of the chorus seem to eventually come together to create a type of chorus that became more of a musical vision. They, this track reminded me of uh, the lyrics, at least, of Michael Jackson's Thriller, something that you would see in kind of the the graveyard, the, uh, you know, the, the haunting kind of scenes here. Um, it brings the lesson back to the, the golden age of the 70s, hard rock, soul, and blues eras, um, as, can, as can be seen with the um, guitar solo uh, that closes out the chorus. Very, very, very nice guitar, guitar solo that I did not expect. Um, basically, the song um, can be seen as a chant that spreads the message of, of never wanting to die in a mysterious and dark a witchy way, very interesting. Something that um, you know we've seen on seen on Delta Ray with um, you know bottom 
bottom of the river. You know, the song is very mysterious, and this this song, I Will Never Die, is kind of a continuation of that. Uh, bottom of the River, of course, is on their Care of the Fire LP. All right, my overall thoughts, I really, really enjoyed this LP. Um, it's it's everything. This LP has everything. The band, the band has a lot of emotion. Um, you know, they they just they build they build things very very nicely. Um, I don't know. It's, it's listening to this band though. I will say is like a is like an exper experience because it feels like you're going back to like the uh, 1800s and you you know I I had the old western feel to it. It's like it's like just traveling through and hearing stories about death, love, magic, life, and just everything, and it's very, very interesting, you know, I, I love especially the genre infusion that they have, you know, you know, when I first heard this band, I used to think it would be an indie rock band only, but then I started listening to it, and I'm like, no, there's there's elements of country, there's elements of, of folk, there's elements of everything, so I think it will, it will touch everyone, everyone will have something to like about it in some way, if you were to listen to it. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for this review. Definitely check out the band. Um, the vocalists are great. The instrumentation's great. I like the fact they kind of brought in Lindsey Buckingham as one of their inspirations and kind of worked off of him. He was good, um, you know, and I definitely check out their Carry the Fire LP. I should be, I want to do a track review of Bottom of the River. I will probably do that within the next couple of days here. So, uh, thank you guys for watching this episode of Every Corner. If you enjoyed this, please check out Delta Ray. Please um, check out me. On, you can follow me on Twitter, at JasonQuinn1992. Uh, if you're an upcoming band, if you're um, an artist that wants me to review something, you know, if, if you're an upcoming band, you want me to just follow you and just have you there, and I can check you guys out, maybe do a review. Definitely do that. Um, yeah. It would be very, very helpful. I'm always looking for new music. Um, thank you guys for watching this episode of Elmery Corner. If you liked it, please subscribe. Um, I try to put out reviews when I can. Uh, we do sports videos, do a whole bunch of other stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.